This was by far the best episode of the Boruto anime thus far, and to hell with everyone who disagrees, and can we just open this up and say Sasuke the stand-up man, the father we all need but don't deserve? Like, you got Sarada there, awakening the Sharingan, yes, for the first time, just thinking about Sasuke, someone who she's never really even seen. But by that I mean she has no reference of him, like, she has no actual visual memory of him, which is why, when she actually thinks about Sasuke, she only sees, like, his clothing. Can't even wait on Chocho's fat ass, who had a drag Naruto behind with him, right? Sarada uses an excuse to use the bathroom, she basically makes it inside of that tower, and you've got Sasuke there like, Oh, so you're here. It's time to draw my sword on you. It's pretty sad because he doesn't really remember his, his own daughter and how she looks like. He just assumes that everything is all fine and dandy in the Hidden Lee Village and she's taken care of, which I guess you could assume should be the case, but you're still her father. And you're a terrible one. I mean, holy macaroni. I know it's dark in there. I know you probably only see side of the shotting gun, and we know that Shin also has a shotting gun, so maybe you got those two conflated and mixed up, but do you really not see the difference between a girl with dark hair, you know, with a normal skin tone, and, and someone that looks like a, literally an extraterrestrial with extremely pale skin? You know, like, I mean, it's not really that hard to see the difference, even if it's dark. If you actually go back and watch the scene over again, it wasn't really like Sasuke was paying attention, he just drew his sword out, and Sarada's really emotional, you could see tears in her eyes. And it's not actually from the fact that Sasuke drew his sword up on her, right? It's from the fact that she actually thought of Sasuke before entering that tower. I'm wondering how much she's gonna cry now, that, that her father's getting ready to freaking stab her to death. This episode was so freaking good that I wasn't even bothered by Chocho's presence, and she was there with Sarada the entire time as they went on a mission to deliver Naruto's lunch, as Sarada's main objective, of course, is to see Sasuke for the first time. And it's not like Chocho didn't say annoying shit, right? Like, she keeps referring back to this handsome man that came to her rescue in bed. And it's like, you didn't even see his face. Like, there's absolutely no reference there. You didn't even see this person's face. How do you know they're handsome, Chocho? It's ridiculous. Anyways, I was there on the edge of my seat as Shin was there flying down with a kunai ready to kill Chocho. Had it not been for Naruto stepping in there, saving her, coming to Sarada's rescue, we could have had a casualty. I think Sarada would have ended up escaping probably if uh, Chocho died and Naruto wasn't there. But who knows, maybe there would have been two bodies because clearly there's something about these characters. Um, and I'm referring to all of these different chains. That's what we're gonna call them because we only know one of their names so far. And we don't really even know their name, but I'm gonna give you the name anyways, right? They seem to have this obsession with Sasuke Uchiha and the reason they're targeting Sarada Uchiha is because they want to draw Sasuke Uchiha, right? That's his daughter, so if we mess with the daughter, if we capture the daughter, then maybe we'll be able to capture Sasuke. Sasuke is their main objective, right? And I guess you could say overall Uchiha is their objective. And I mean, if you haven't read the manga at all, by the end of this episode, you might feel like, damn, even if Sarada did get captured, would Sasuke care? Maybe he'd even go even further into a forest and jerk off on, on bark. Like, you'd think Sasuke's been on that no fat challenge since he left that Himalay village? Since he had that final moment with Sada that you think he ain't ever jerk off once since leaving the village? Y'all are funny. You know, maybe he hasn't actually had much contact with females, even though we really don't know what he's been doing on the outside, but he's definitely had some, uh, had some nuts. We need to talk about some else though. Now episode opens up and we got a beautiful scene between Sasuke Uchiha and Shin in what I could only describe as a blitzkrieg, like a, a fast annihilation on Sasuke's part because he literally traps the dude with his own weapon and electrocutes him. We find out that this character has Mangekyo Sharingan and he's able to manipulate weapons and shit, but he wasn't able to do anything against Sasuke. Sasuke kicked him, he trapped him in his own weapon, and just used lightning release, electrocuting him. So when I saw that, guys, I just realized, man, Naruto needs to step it up because when it comes to the Naruto vs. Sasuke debate, when I see stuff like that, it is so hard so hard not to think in the back of my head, 
that Sasuke's got this one at the moment. I don't know how Shin or that Uchiha Plankton plan on taking Sasuke down, right? And I assume that Uchiha Plankton is just a proxy, basically a way for the, the main perpetrator, the one in the cave, and we don't really see his full identity yet. Um, it's just a way for him to get close to his targets and basically use him as an eye. And the same way that Gata used his third eye, right? He could basically hide himself in a shield and see everything from the outside with an eye. Pretty convenient if you ask me, but it's just simply not enough, right? And that's where I feel like they're gonna really need to come up with a major strategy if they want to body Sasuke, because at the moment, it's just not going to be possible. Like, I know Sasuke was a little bit shook up and nervous because he's seeing a, a guy with a shotting gun and his entire clan is wiped out and annihilated, and he even sent a hawk to warn Naruto in the village about these threats. But as far as I could tell, even though I forgot a lot of the events in Gai Den, these guys are only being introduced to have Sanada and Sasuke connect with each other, as well as have Sanada figure out who a real mom's is, because I find Kaden a lot more attractive than Sakura. And I'm assuming most men do as well. It ain't nothing like an anime female with red hair and big titties. Now when we compare Sasuke's combat to Naruto's combat in this week's episode, listen, it's pretty freaking close because Naruto pulled out Senjutsu Sage of Six Paths mode. Imagine if he actually pulled out Levitation and Truth Seeking Balls as well. Then I would have to unanimously give stronger character to Naruto versus Sasuke. Because this dude was knocking shit off from the behind like it was nothing. Then he was chasing down Shin with all those chakra arms like Kurama and Naruto developed a very strong bond with each other because Kurama was ready to let loose immediately, right? Thinking about the well-being of everyone around. Whereas in the past, Kurama would have to literally be tugged upon at the end of the fight when Naruto couldn't fight anymore with his regular energy to come out. Because that Ninetales chakra was something else. It was ready to chase Shin down to the end of the earth and back, which is why ultimately they had to transport away, you know, using what looked to be a very Kamui-like jutsu. I'm assuming that this is from Obito because he has the, the very same, you know, ability as him and they're obviously connected because it's the Shotingan. All this stuff is so weird though, seeing all these characters with the Shotingan. Hmm, I wonder who could be involved behind something like that, right? And uh, even if it isn't the Kamui specifically, it is very, very similar and it's clearly inspired off of that. So if there was some experimentation going on, Clearly, it was reference to Obito's ability. At the very least, though, we got a glimpse at a brand new looking Mangekyo Sharingan, and we pretty much now have the confirmation that Naruto, yes, can use Senjutsu slash Seija 6 Pass Mode, the power that he received from Hagaromo back during the war. It's not the, the version that we want to see because there ain't no truth seeking balls, and he ain't flying the air, and he, he doesn't have the access to all the Tail Beast Chakra, but it's still better than nothing, right? Because if you took that form away from him, guys, Sasuke unanimously would be stronger than Naruto. And even though Shikamaru Naruto bothered Kakashi as he was chilling in the bathhouse in the lobby, you know, who's, who's on the phone there, you can tell Kakashi's really ahead of the game and he knows what's going on because he basically said that, you know, either someone survived in the Uchiha clan, which is kind of unlikely, or it's connected back to him. And him always means Orochimaru because he is reoccurring. You will always refer to Orochimaru as him because he's a snake that never went away. And he's been around since the part one days. Am I the only one who feels like the lunch he Nasa prepared and gave to Boruto to deliver to Naruto, which was ultimately given to Sanada? Like, that shit should have been, like, absolutely disgusting by the time it got to Naruto. Because, I mean, the way they were carrying that shit around, and even Shocho had a comment on Sanada moving really quickly with it, and obviously they were in the middle of a fight and they had to throw it around and stuff, it's like, the food would have gone through a cleaning. Right? I'm guessing Naruto will leave anything kind of like Goku, so he don't care if, like, the food is all mixed up together and like sweaty and all that, but I wouldn't eat that. I certainly wouldn't. I don't care if my wife prepared it or not. I thought those two did a good enough job delivering the lunch. Um, they definitely stood their own again, Shin. I've got to say Sadada as a whole progressed a lot as a character this week, although she was hella impatient at the end. We could excuse her for that because she hasn't seen her father in years upon years. Doesn't even remember how he looks like, right? So. She, she don't care if Chocho's out of energy, about to have a stroke right there, dragging Naruto down. 
she got more important issues to attend. Oh man, Chocho was getting shitted on. I mean, I guess it's partially her fault because she's kind of a clown and she's like, Naruto, are you my father? And, and Naruto quickly shuts down any idea of anyone fighting over her as the, the beautiful maiden or whatever. And you know, he, for instance, pats Sarada on the head, whereas he completely resists any, you know, love from Chocho. Uh, but like, just the insult that Naruto threw at the end to Chocho, like, you got the face of Karui. You've got the body of Choji in the past. You remind me of food. You remind me of some meat buns. <laughs> you know, I know it's gonna take some time for that to hit, you know, Chocho, and for her to really feel like what was just said to her.